Season 2, Episode 1. Brought to you with the Golden Tire 201, the ultimate 50-50 adventure tire. To see more of Lyndon's thoughts on the 201, click on the link in the description below. Too. I'm just counting Lyndon's underpants. Alright, Chris, what, what's going on? Not now, Mikey. I'm busy getting Lyndon's stuff together. He needs more gloves. Yeah, Chris, check this in in case you get hungry. Time for a sexy party. Last time on Races to Places, Lyndon and Lucas crossed the bottom of the Aral Sea and sampled some Kazakhstani cuisine. Yum yum, horse meat. Heading south from the Aral Sea towards Uzbekistan, Lyndon and Lucas will now have to deal with the guards at the border using their unstamped visas after their unsuccessful attempts to liaise with Kazakhstani customs before their Aral Sea crossing. Using any type of video equipment at a border crossing is not permitted. But Lyndon convinces the guard his camera is part of the bike's GPS system. With the guards on their side, the boys advance through the Uzbekistan border. However, the day is closing in, meaning less chance of finding a place to stay. We rode through Kazakhstan all day and then arrived at the Uzbekistan border at around 6.30pm local time. The nearest town is 300 kilometers away, so it'd be like one o'clock in the morning by the time we got there. And the only place was this very small house here behind me. Uh, and the family here uh, very kindly offered to make us some food. And also, basically, if we paid them for some food and some drink, then they would let us stay the night to sleep as well, which is really, really nice. Very hot today. I think I've sweated more than I ever have on this entire trip. And I've drank about six litres of water today, so that gives an indication of how much I've been uh, losing the moisture. A new day, a new dawn. Moving further into Uzbekistan, Lyndon feels a very warm welcome from the locals using a variety of transport. <laughs>
Here's some info on Uzbekistan for those of us unfamiliar with the region. It's bordered by five countries, Kazakhstan and the Aral Sea to the north, Tajikistan to the southeast, Kyrgyzstan to the northeast, Afghanistan to the south, and Turkmenistan to the southwest. Formerly belonging to the Russian Empire, the country became independent Republic of Uzbekistan in 1991. The country's official language is Uzbek, spoken natively by approximately 85% of the population, of which the vast majority are Muslim. The country's main commodities are cotton, gold, uranium and natural gas. But the government applies strict filters to many items imported into Uzbekistan. It's time to explore the local architecture. Gopo, be a hero! this country, when you want to spend your hard-earned cash, it's not as easy as just popping your PIN number in at the local cash machine. So when we arrive in any country, one of the first things that we need to do is uh, get ourselves some of the local currency. Uh, up to now that's been really easy, you just find a cash machine, uh, put the card in and extract some money from the machine. Unfortunately, when we got to Uzbekistan it wasn't quite as easy. First of all, there are no cash machines. So it's not as easy as just putting your card in and drawing some cash out. Secondly, it seems the money is all black market. So literally you need US dollars and then you can get money um, by literally bumping into somebody in the street that wants to sell you it on the black market. So now we've tried, um, we've tried five banks to get some uh, money in Uzbekistan and have been unsuccessful at all of them so far. They all have money machines, cash machines, inside. None of them work. This is the Azaka Bank. And we will now try and see if we can get some money from here. One hundred ten thousand. A lot of money. As I mentioned earlier, the government applies strict filters to items imported into the country which is giving the boys a challenge to find a higher grade of fuel so their bikes can run optimally. In the UK, our standard grade of fuel is 95 RON. RON meaning research octane number. The higher the RON, the higher the activation energies, or in simple terms, more power. Less RON equals very unhappy KTMs and possible engine damage. We'll go and fill the bikes. We'll try and find some 91 grade fuel. Um, yesterday we had to use 80 grade, which is not ideal at all. Um, we're just about to ride into the old part of the city, so I'll turn the camera around. With regards to the fuel, none of the petrol stations you see, they only have diesel and LPG, gas. No petrol, because the allowance is like 2,000 litres a month per town or something like this. So. You have to be very lucky to get it, and when you do find it, it's 80 octane. So you have to ask around the locals, find somebody that's got some 80 octane left over, and then usually you can, uh, you can negotiate and buy some from them. In the old part of the city, um, really beautiful bed and breakfast, uh, Zafarbek bed and breakfast, super nice Wi-Fi, air-conditioned rooms. It was really nice after five days out in the desert. I saw a UK registration plate on a big truck and there's 12 of them uh, traveling in this huge truck from Germany to China, oh, sorry, Turkey to China, I think, in this thing. The next port of call is Bukhara, Uzbekistan, where the local hotel is bike friendly, meaning Basel is welcome inside too. Checked in, it's time for some food. When we arrive late, sometimes this is all we can get. The next morning, Lyndon and Lucas head for the massive ruins of the Ark Fortress, which was fully functional until 1920 when it fell to Russia. Currently, it's a large tourist attraction. Yo, 
are you doing? Yeah, mate, I'm absolutely flat out. I'm just watching a few uh, bikini competitions on uh, YouTube. <laughs> uh, student ID, so you can get in the uh, attractions cheaper. Yeah, no worries, I'll knock one up and send it over. So Lyndon whips out his student ID and heads inside. Okay, so we've got him managed to get inside the ark. Um, a little bit of negotiation and uh, obviously we're students so we're in a discounted rate. Um, you can't actually get to a lot of the ark, you can only get to what looks like about a quarter of it. Uh, what's really interesting is it is a super old place. I mean, this dates back about thousands of years. And um, just looking around, it's clear to see that some of it has, was bombed by the Soviets in like the 1920s. Um, so it's all been repaired. But some of the old uh, arc is still there, so you can still see a lot of the old places. But there's some nice museums here with some coins and some like old um, protective clothing that they, uh, they used to wear in those days and uh, it's really nice to see that stuff but really not, not a massive place to look around but good to have a look anyway. seen some big bug strikes, helmet strikes in my time but that is a big bug strike. Check it out. Imagine if that had gone in my eye. I have no idea what it is but it's like some huge big big bug strike. Yeah. Another glorious day on Races to Places so the boys hit the road again. But it's not long before Lucas's bike loses its spark and it's time to get the tools out. So here we are in front of the shop uh, waiting for some parts advice from Walter who's getting my parts from the UK. Hopefully shipping them to Dushanbe in Tajikistan. Lyndon is waiting and just fell asleep next to the bike instead of being useful and actually helping me fix it. <laughs> also, maybe he's not asleep after all. What I'm going to do is disconnect my stator, then check the individual voltages on the stator so that we have a baseline to know what his should be reading. Basically what I can tell you is that the voltage on each three phases on my uh, stator generator is 20.6 volts and Lucas's is reading 15, 14 and 9 so clearly it's the, uh, it's the stator that's gone so we need to try and figure out how to get a stator now. With a large car battery strapped on board to keep Lucas's steed running, the duo head optimistically for Dushanbe where hopefully a parcel from Walter Colbatch will save the day. Good luck. Alright man, good luck. First time speeding up here. Thank See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you, have fun. Next time on Races to Places, the dynamic duo have to part company, leaving Lyndon riding solo and taking on the epic Tajikistan mountains. I'm sorry Mr Lomax, but DHL cannot ship live animals. Season 2, Episode 1. Brought to you with the Golden Tire 201, the ultimate 50 50 adventure tire. To see more of Lyndon's thoughts on the 201, click on the link in the description below. <laughs>